Today, we're going to go ahead and take a look at activity 1.4, coding with conditions. More specifically, we're going to take a deeper look into conditional statements. Now, think about the following scenario. When approaching a street intersection with a traffic light, a driver has to make sure the light is green before crossing. If the light is red, the driver has to stop. The thought process that driver follows in an intersection is similar to the process computers use to make decisions. Computers are able to respond to what we call user-initiated events based on answers to yes-no or true-false questions. These questions and the actions that a computer takes based on the answers are called conditional statements. Evaluating a condition to true or false is known as Boolean logic. In this activity, you are going to learn how to write algorithms that contain conditional statements. Now, for your algorithms with conditional logic, you're going to go ahead and watch the following video. After watching the following video, we're going to talk a little bit about how conditional statements can be used. Remember, algorithms that contain conditions, also referred to as conditional algorithms, can be written using numbered lists or represented in flowcharts, similar to those you created in the Amazing Algorithms activity back in Activity 1.2. Today, we're going to be reviewing how to create a conditional statement based off of that prior activity. Let's take a look at a new block that we're going to be using in our flow chart. In our previous exercise, we learned about the beginning and ending block, which we used, which is an oval. We also learned about our command block, which was a rectangle. Now we're going to be moving into conditional statements. We're going to be adding a conditional question, which is going to be represented by a diamond shaped symbol called a rhombus. Arrows from that rhombus direct the person or computer to the next step based on the answer to the question. So in the video, they talked a little bit about creating a flow chart and how you would get to school based on a condition. So let's explore this condition just a little bit more. As you can see that we have basically our beginning and ending, which are represented by the oval. And in order to get there, we have a rhombus, which contains a yes or no question. And that's important to know that your questions should be based on true or false or yes or no. Based on that question, we're going to get to two different commands. Either we're going to walk to school or we're going to ride the bus. So when we look at this flow chart, we start with our beginning block and then we ask ourselves a question. Is it raining? If we answer yes to that question, then we're going to follow the yes arrow and we're going to go ahead and ride the bus to school. So again, is it raining? Yes. Let's go ahead and ride the bus. Now, if we go back to the beginning and we ask ourselves that question again, is it raining? And our answer to that question is no. Then we're going to go ahead and walk to school. So again, is it raining? No. Let's walk to school. Now, based on that one condition, we can have two outcomes based off of that question. And we can do the same thing with our applications or any type of program that you are writing. We can get the user to decide on something that's going to happen based on a conditional statement. We can also use the control layer in our app to make those decisions for us based on previous outcomes. Now that we know a little bit about conditional algorithms, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our field trip navigation back from activity 1.2, and we're going to apply a universal algorithm to get us to go from the start to the finish. In activity 1.2, we created a linear algorithm to get our bus to navigate from our school to our museum. We use three different commands in order for this to happen. Move forward, turn left, or turn right. Now this algorithm will work if we are leaving from the school to the museum and that there are no obstacles in our path. What we want to do is take conditional statements and be able to apply it so that we can create a universal algorithm to get our bus to navigate from the school to the museum. Now, this universal algorithm should work no matter where we place the bus on the map. So let's take a look at what if we place some obstacles on our course. Here you can see that we've added a couple different obstacles to our course. We went ahead and added a do not turn left. We added two do not turn rights. And we also added two stop signs. 
So we're going to need to go ahead and create an algorithm that's going to allow our bus to get from the school to the museum. Now, we can still do this using a linear algorithm, and it would still work. But what we want to do is use those conditional statements to help us in order to get from the school to the museum, no matter where we are on that map. So we can go ahead and move that bus from one place to another, and no matter where it's at, it should still be able to get from point A to point B. In order to create our universal algorithm, we're going to use a software program called Draw.io, and that's going to allow us to go ahead and create this universal algorithm. Now, what you'll notice I have on the screen for you is that we already have our bus map, and that bus map can be used to basically show us exactly what is going on and how the bus needs to navigate from the school to the museum. Now, remember the purpose of your universal algorithm is not just to get the bus to go from the school to the museum, but to work no matter where it is placed on that map. So if that bus were to start at any one of those blocks, our algorithm should work and get the bus to the museum. Unlike our linear flowchart, only allowed us to navigate in one direction from the school to the museum. If we were to put that bus at a different block, it wouldn't work. So let's go ahead and ask ourselves some questions here on how we can create this universal algorithm. So one of the things that you'll notice in here is I already have some commands placed in there to make this easier. We already have our ovals, which are going to be our starting and our ending point. I have a rhombus, which is our conditional statements, and I also have a rectangle, which are my command structures. I also have a couple yes and no labels to help us out with labeling our decisions. So for this, we have to ask questions, and there's really four questions that we can ask ourselves in order to get the bus to navigate along the correct path. Now, the obvious ones are basically, is there a stop sign? Is there a right turn or is there a left turn? Or can you turn right or turn left? The one that we tend to always forget is the first one. And it's probably the most important out of all of them. So once my algorithm starts at that starting block, the first thing we're going to have is a condition or a question. And the first question that we're going to go ahead and ask ourselves is, have you arrived at the museum? If you've already arrived at the museum, then there is no need to go any further. We're already there. However, if the answer to this question is no, then we need to start asking additional questions in order to get that bus to move. So let's go ahead and take my no, and I'm going to place that down below. And we're going to go ahead and basically say, no, it's not working. We haven't arrived at the museum. What are we going to go ahead and do next? What is the next question I need to ask? So in this case, now that we've asked ourselves that question, have you arrived at the museum? The next thing we can look at is, can you turn right? Can you turn left? Or is there a stop sign? Those are the three biggest questions we have to ask ourselves. In this case, we'll go ahead and plug in, is there a stop sign? So if there is a stop sign, we probably should end up stopping the car and waiting for a few seconds before moving forward. However, let's say there isn't a stop sign. The next thing we need to do is bring another one of those no's because there's no stop sign. And we're going to need to ask another question. Now, the two remaining questions that we basically have at this point is, can you turn right or can you turn left? So let's go ahead and put that in there. Let's do a right turn first. Can you turn right? And what if the answer to that is no as well? You can't turn right. The only other option that we have as far as a decision that needs to be made is, can you turn left? So now that we've asked all of the four main questions, we now should be able to gather some information to get our bus to actually move. So if we take a look at the questions, and let's go ahead and review these. Our program starts, have you arrived at the museum? No. Is there a stop sign? No. Can you turn right? No. Can you turn left? No then the only other thing that could happen at this point is that we could add a command structure down below and that command is gonna get our bus to move. And in this case, what that's going to do is basically move my bus forward. Now that we've asked the questions, if no is the answer to all of them, we can get my bus to move forward. And from there, we're gonna basically go back and keep repeating this procedure. So let's bring another arrow in, 
And from my arrow, what we're going to need to do is bring this to the bottom of my move forward. And we're going to loop this guy all the way back to the beginning. And then we'll repeat the same process over and over again until we've reached our museum. So we'll put him back right underneath the start bar. And now you can see we have this infinite loop where it's going to keep going and going and going. So in this case, the only thing my bus can do is really move forward because we've answered no to all those questions. So what we have to do next is figure out what happens to all the yeses. So the first one is, have you arrived at the museum? Well, what if we have arrived at the museum? Then what? What are we going to do next if we've arrived there? Well, in this case, it's pretty simple. If we've arrived at the museum, we're just going to go ahead and say, stop, you arrived. So we're going to put another command structure here and inside of that command structure we'll go ahead and put stop you arrived and from there we're going to go ahead and bring in one of our yeses so here you can see that we now have our first yes so have you arrived at the museum yes i have stop you arrived and my program would end now remember this should basically work no matter where you are at on the actual map so obviously, if we haven't arrived at the museum, we still need to go down to the next condition. So the next condition said, is there a stop sign? Well, we said earlier, if there is a stop sign, what we should probably go ahead and do is probably wait for a certain amount of time. So let's go ahead and let's say we're gonna wait for five seconds. Now that we've waited for five seconds, we can go ahead and we're gonna extend another arrow line so let's bring one more arrow in here and we'll put him over there. And from here, what we're gonna need to do is basically take this line and we're gonna run it back to that infinite loop. So what's gonna happen here is if we start our program, start, have you arrived at the museum? No, I haven't. Is there a stop sign? Yes, let's wait for five seconds. And then we need to go back and check if we arrived at the museum, no. Is there a stop sign? No, because we've already gone ahead and waited. Then we can go ahead and continue. So we're gonna bring that yes in over here. And now we can continue with, can you turn right? So what if the answer to this one is yes? So in this case, if the answer to can you turn right is yes, well then what our bus should do is basically turn right. Once that bus go ahead and turn right, again, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna go ahead and take our arrow and loop it back so we can check all the conditions again. So again, if we start, have you arrived at the museum? No. Is there a stop sign? No. Can you turn right? Yes. Turn right. And then we're gonna go back and repeat the same process. So remember, this process is gonna keep repeating. And in a computer, this is going to happen at an extremely high rate where we're not gonna see any type of lag time or anything like this. It's just gonna be running this condition in the background. Now, the last condition that we had was, can you turn left? So just like we did with our right, we're gonna go ahead and connect those, and that's gonna be our yes. And if that's my yes, what we wanna have in there is turn left. Now that we have that turn left, we can go ahead and line up our line. And again, we're gonna run that back to the beginning. And now you've created a universal algorithm. So if we tested our algorithm out, no matter where we go ahead and put our bus on that map, it should actually work. So let's go ahead and give this a test and see if our algorithm actually works. Now that we've gone ahead and completed our universal algorithm, what we have done here is we've taken our bus and placed it at the top portion of the screen. Now, if our algorithm runs correctly, we should be able to get that bus to navigate from its current location all the way to the museum using that universal algorithm. So go ahead and give it a shot, run your algorithm, and see if it will get your bus to navigate to the museum.